Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back. Today on Milanese Math, we're going to be talking about exponent properties. This is going to be part one of a series. And if you want to follow along with this worksheet, it'll be the first link in the description below. Okay, so when we talk about exponents, there's a few things that we need to get defined because we're going to be using this terminology a lot. And just want to make sure you understand what it's talking about. So let's look at this first term, 5x squared. Um, obviously, I think most of us probably know that this thing, uh, this two here is called the exponent, right? So this is the exponent. And anything that's in that position is considered to be the exponent. In this example, the x, it is a variable, but we're really, when we're talking about exponents, we refer to this as the base. And the base is the thing that gets multiplied by itself. And the exponent tells you how many times that you multiply it by itself. Now this specific example also has a five out in front and this is called a coefficient. So we've got three things you need to know, the coefficient, the base and the exponent. So if, as I'm talking about this throughout this uh, lesson, just refer back to that. That's what we're talking about. Okay, so let's just run through as a quick refresh of how exponents work. In this example, two to the fourth power, um, the base, is two, that's the, the, the thing that gets multiplied by itself, and the exponent is four. It tells us how many times we're multiplying two by itself. So this is gonna be the same as two times itself four times. So two times two times two times two, which is 16. Okay, so two to the fourth power is 16, and we got that because we multiplied two by itself four times. Now I put one other example in here. I put X to the zero power, but technically you could put anything to the zero power because no matter what it is, whether it's a variable or a number or whatever, anything to the zero power equals one. And I feel like that's gonna become important today. So I just wanted to make sure you had that sort of a background. Now, when it comes to the rules of exponents and how they work, I oftentimes will show my students where the rule comes from. And this is because it, you know, yes, you should memorize these rules, but if you happen to forget them, you can kind of derive them yourselves. You can kind of figure out where they come from yourselves. So let's say we had something like x squared times x squared. How, what, what would be the answer to that? Or how would that simplify? And how could we write that in one term? Well, think about it if we expanded each one of those x squareds, right? x squared is just x times x. And we could write the other x squared as x times x. Okay, well, if I wanted to write this as one term, how many times is X getting multiplied by itself? Well, there's one, two, three, four X's. So that's the same as X to the fourth power. Okay, let's do another one. Let's try to look and see if we can find a pattern. I could rewrite, this is X squared times X to the third. So X squared, is there's two X's, and then X to the third would be X times X times X. Well, if I wanted to write that as one term, in other words, how many times is X being multiplied by itself? I would keep that base and then I would take, let's count them up, one, two, three, four, five. So X to the fifth power. Okay, let's start to look for a pattern here. How about the next one? X to the first power times X to the fifth. Well, X to the first power is just one X by itself. And then X to the fifth, here we go, there's five. One, two, three, four, Five. All together, how many X's are there? Well, we'll keep that base and add them up. We would have six altogether. You're starting to see a pattern yet. Thinking from how do we go from those set the column with the separate terms to one term, what would be a shortcut we could use? Let's just do a few more here. X squared times X to the fourth, there would be two. And then in this set of parentheses, there'll be four. How many are there all together? Well, as one term, I could write this as x to the sixth power. Notice that both of this one and the previous one both turned out to be x to the sixth power. Okay, one last one, and then hopefully you're starting to catch on to the pattern here. Check this out. So we've got three x's, and then the last one is x to the fifth power, so five. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, all together, there are eight, x to the eighth power. So now that we've done that, the question is, what pattern do you notice? In other words, how did we go from that first column all the way to the last column? Well, there's two things that are important. One is that we keep the base. So that base, in this case, was a, it was an X. 
it stayed the same. So we keep the base and then a shortcut to get to that final answer would be to just add your exponents, okay? So add exponents. So like for example, on that last one we did x to the third power times x to the fifth power. Maybe if you were paying attention, you caught on to that and you just instinctively started adding them three and five make eight, so it's x to the eighth power. And that's the rule. That's what we wanted to talk about in this video. Let's see if we can apply it in a few examples. So number one, says uh, y to the second power times y to the eighth power. Well, the rule says keep the base, which in this example is a y, and add the exponents. Two plus eight is 10. See, you're already working with exponents. That was pretty easy. Uh, let's do another one. Hey, look on number two. b to the sixth times b. It is implied, if you don't see an exponent, it's implied that there's a one there. And if that makes you feel better, sometimes my students will go through and actually fill in a one because it helps you remember to keep your base, which is B in this example, add your exponents. Six plus one is seven, so B to the seventh power. Not too bad. Moving right along, number three. Now, this one's a little bit different. Notice this one has some coefficients. So it's two Z to the second times four Z to the third. So here's a coefficient and here's a coefficient. Well, how do we handle that? First thing, just go ahead and multiply your coefficients. So two times four is eight. And then just do what we've been doing. Keep the base, which in this example is Z. Add your exponents. Two plus three is five. Eight Z to the fifth. Okay, let's get it a little bit more complicated here on number four. Now we have three terms. It's three D times D to the seventh times 9d to the 11th, okay? So I'm gonna go through and look at my coefficients. I've got a three and a nine. So the first thing that I'll do is multiply those. So I've got 27, that's three times nine is 27. And then let's just go through and count up our d's. I'm gonna keep the base, which is a d. Remember, this first one is d to the first power. So one plus seven is eight plus another 11. Uh, is gonna be 19. So a final answer there would be 27 D to the 19th. So that's all you had to do. Multiply your coefficients if you have them, keep the base, add the exponents. Uh, but then what happens on one like number five? Uh, because now we have two different bases. Well, in this example, it's X to the fourth times X to the second. Those ones go together because they have the same base. Y to the third times Y to the seventh. Those ones go together because they have the same base. So if we are gonna apply our rule of keep the base, I know you're gonna have an X and a Y. Both of those are in the base, okay? X to the fourth times X to the second, how many X's do we have? Well, we have six. So the X gets an exponent of six. What would we put with the Y? Well, there's three Y's and seven more Y's, that makes 10 Y's, so Y to the 10th power. So you would read that x to the sixth, y to the 10th, okay? And this could get as complex as you want. I mean, you could have as many um, variables or as many bases as you wanted. You apply the rule the same way. So if I scan through number six, I've got a, b, c, b, a. So there's three different ones. Sometimes my students will just come through and they'll just list the different, the unique bases that are there. And then they'll go through and count up each one of them. So I've got, if I look for my a's, it's a to the second, and then at the end, a to the sixth. Altogether, that would make a to the eighth power, okay? And then what about b's? Well, technically this is b to the first, and then another b to the fourth, one plus four is five. So we've got b to the fifth power. And then c, um, there's only one term with a c, and it's to the twelfth power, so we would just leave it as an exponent of 12. So a to the eighth, b to the fifth, c to the 12th. All right, let's try one really, really difficult one. And then I think I'm gonna let you try some here. So here we go. Uh, the first thing I wanna do is kind of skim through there. It looks like I've got a G and an H. Now this is where you gotta be kind of careful um, because we do, st I see also some coefficients. So what I'm gonna suggest you do is just Pick one, uh, pick one of the 
bases. In this case, I'm going to go with uh, G since I'm going alphabetically. And I want to multiply just the coefficients that go with G. So 2 times 9 is 18. So it's going to be 18G to the 6th power. Now, where did I get that exponent of 6? Well, if I look at that first term, it has an exponent of 5. This last one has an exponent of 1. 5 plus 1 is 6. So again, all I did is I just separated them by their base. So the bases of g has a 2g and a 9g. Multiply those uh, coefficients. Let's do the same thing with the h. Multiply your coefficients. We've got a 3 and a 10. That makes 30 h to the 11th power. And again, all I did was I took my exponent of 4, my exponent of 7, added them to get an 11. Okay, so there is a lot more to learn with exponents, but I wanted to just break these down into one rule or one concept at a time. So hopefully this video was helpful. And if it was, consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, thank you for watching and we'll catch you next time.